Welcome back to the ROS with Git from the Ground Up tutorial series. In this tutorial, we will install Git and look at how to use GitHub to save and track our work. Git is a version control system widely used in the software industry to ensure code is backed up and stamped along the way, so in case anything breaks in a future update, you can always revert to old working code. We'll need it for these very reasons. Let's first install Git. To do this, you can either install it through the command line or via an installer on their website. Here's how to do it through the command line. Let's open up a terminal and sudo apt update. Type in your password. This will make sure all the repositories are up to date. Next, we'll sudo apt install git. git git. And this will install Git. As you can see, it's already been installed on the system. Alternatively, if you don't have Git, you can go to git-scm.com and download and run their installer. Once you have Git installed, in order for it to know who is authoring code from this computer, you must tell it who you are. So to do that, you can type git config dash dash global space user dot name quote, type your name, and make sure, end quote. Hit enter. Next, we'll do the same thing, except user dot email, and put your email. Git is accessed through the command line, so other services like GitHub were created so users could visually see their backed up files and history on the web. GitHub's main page is github.com. If you haven't yet, you will need to sign up for a GitHub account. It's super simple and you only need a free account to use all their main services. To do that, you can type a username, email, and password and hit sign up. To back up your work, your code and other project files are stored in containers called repositories. A repository is what keeps track of the changes you make to the files inside of it. Sometimes I abbreviate repository to repo, so just know these two terms are synonymous. If you're working on an existing team that already has a public repository created for your project on GitHub, to gain access you simply need to go to the repository page and click the green button that says code and copy the link. Now, to download and initialize this repository on your local computer, you can go over to the terminal and cd change directory into an empty folder. You can use the ls command, short for list, to see what files and folders are in this current directory. I've already created an empty folder called git tutorial. As you can see, if we ls it, there's nothing in it. So if this folder is where I want to initialize our repository, you can type git clone and then paste the link. We have now successfully downloaded the repository structure and stored it in git tutorial. If we change directory into the repository's name, we can see that readme.md, which is a readme file that was automatically set up, got downloaded as part of the repository. Now, I'm going to quickly create a file to show you how to add a new file to a repository so we can keep track of its changes. If we save this file inside of our Git repository that we set up, next to readme in the root of the git repository, and we call it hello underscore world dot txt or any other file name extension. We can now go back to our terminal. Now, if we type git status, we can see that one file, our file hello world dot txt, has not been added to our repository yet, as shown in red. 
To add this file to our repository, we're going to need to add it first to a commit. A commit is a specific version tag that allows us to track the version history of each of the files and of all the files in the repository. Once we commit our changes, we can push our changes. Pushing our changes will sync all of our files back to the cloud on the GitHub server. Any changes or commits that aren't pushed will not be reflected on the cloud. And as such, if anything happens to your computer, your work will be lost. So let's add hello world.txt to our repository. To do this, we can type git add and then hello world.txt. Alternatively, if we have a lot of files that we want to add, we can just type git add dash capital A. This will add all of the modified files to our commit. Next, we need to commit our changes. To do this, we type git commit dash m quote and then a commit message, something like added hello world.txt. Alternatively, we could have just typed git commit. Since we've already committed and there's been no changes, you won't see this. But by normally typing git commit, it'll prompt you with a text editor that'll explain how to add a commit message. Next, we need to push our changes to the server. To do that, we can type git push and then origin and whichever branch you want to push to. In this case, we will just push to the master branch. Pushing directly to the master branch, especially if you are part of a larger team, is probably not what you want to do. Rather, you probably want to commit to your own individual branch first. We'll talk more about branches later. In this case, since I'm the only one working on this repository, I'll just push to master. It'll prompt me for my username and for my password to GitHub. And now we can see we've updated the old master to a new version with our commit. And by typing git status again, we can see that our branch master is up to date and all of our changes have been saved. It is very important if you're working on a team to always git fetch and git pull before you start working and adding commits to a branch. This will make sure that any changes that someone else has made since you've last updated your local files will be reflected and you won't have change conflicts on some of your files. To do this, we can type git fetch and git pull. Since we're already up to date, there isn't any changes to be downloaded. Now to visualize on GitHub our commit, we can go back to our repository on GitHub and refresh the page. We can now see that hello world.txt has been added. And if we click on it, we can see the contents of the file. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.